Hey, how's it going? My name's Terry and I'm here to help you out a little bit with SolidWorks. So uh, what I'm going to do in this video is to go through how to make use or how I think you can best make use of the built-in SolidWorks tutorials. So let's jump to SolidWorks. Uh, so uh, hopefully by now you know how to get SolidWorks starting, started. So I'm just going to go to the SolidWorks without my head in the corner. And up here you can get to, in help, you can get to the SolidWorks tutorials. And I've just got to drag it across from my other screen here, just a second. All right, so let's, so hopefully you've got a big enough screen that you can do this and have the tutorial side by side. Uh, also, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so it's a bit easier to see. Uh, don't do these two, uh, just uh, they're a little bit more complicated than is needed for a first time user of SolidWorks. So I suggest you suggest that you jump straight to this lesson one parts tutorial. And you can see here it's got all the steps that are part of the tutorial. And then down in the bottom right hand corner here you can see the next topic. So if we go to creating and saving. It goes through in detail the steps that you need to do to complete the tutorial. Um, try not to skip ahead, just take your time, work through it slowly, uh, otherwise you're going to get yourself um, into places where you shouldn't be and get stuck and not sure what you should do next. Uh, if your SolarWorks is set up correctly, if you click on where it tells you to do things in the tutorial over here, so I'm looking over here at the right hand side of the screen in the tutorial. If you click on the box here, it shows you inside SolarWorks where that icon is. So we want to start a new document, so we can click on that. And it says over here, double click on part. So let's do that, double click. And we've started creating a new part. Uh, go back over to our tutorial here on the right hand side and we can see it says to click save so let's go up here again you remind if you click there it'll show you over here in SolidWorks you can see it flashing uh, where that icon is so click on that uh, I've already started one before so um, I'm just going to overwrite that so you'll just need to type it in for yourself if you're doing it for the first time yeah I'm going to replace it Okay, so we've done that. Let's go over here and scroll down. Why is that it's not scrolling down? Okay, I think we're probably at the bottom. All right. Um, so what's happening here? Oh, there it is. Okay, so the next step is creating the base. Okay, so what you'll see here is in the tutorial, it tells you what you're going to do in the, in the next lot of steps. Okay, so if this is your first time through the tutorial, you need to go down to the right hand side here at the bottom and click on the next topic to get to the full details. Okay. So what this allows you to do is to do the tutorial multiple times and when you come back the next time, when you get to here, you can have a go at trying to do this part of the tutorial uh, without looking at all the instructions. And if we get time, I might do that. Okay, so, but let's, this is, assuming this is our first time through, sketching the base, go up to the top here, click Extruded Boss Base. You can try and find it for yourself. So it's over here, top left hand corner. Or you can click on that thing again and it highlights where you need to be. Okay, so let's click on that. Go back to my tutorial here and it says uh, the top front top right planes appear. So here we can see those in the, uh, the work plane. And you've also got some information here. Why do we start a sketch with an extrusion? And you can click on that to get some more information. Okay, so let's click back up here to get back. 
Okay, so it says select a front plane. So let's do that. So we're going to click here, select the front front plane. And then it comes down here. We, we're now in the sketch environment. So it says down here, next step is to click the corner rectangle. So again, we can click on that and it shows us that they're highlighted. We can also see the little triangle here. If you drop that down, you can see that there are five different ways that we can create a rectangle or four different ways and one parallelogram. So we want the corner rectangle. So we click on that and it says to start at the corner, sorry, at the origin. So we go over here and we can see the little yellow square with the icon indicating that we're connected to the origin. So I click on that and drag out. At this stage, we don't need to worry about the, um, the exact dimensions. Uh, anything will do. So down in the tutorial over here, it says 28.62 and 20.48. We don't need that. We'll just make anything we like. So that'll do. Let's scroll that down a little bit to see the next bit. Release the corner by um, pressing escape or pressing enter. And there's a few other things there that I can't see because I've made this bigger so you can see it on the video. So now what we want to do is to actually dimension that base. So if you click on dimensioning the base here, um, we can click on select on our toolbar. So that's up there. And we can see these little green things here that indicate the relations. So I won't go into that in this tutorial. We'll learn more about those later. Um, let's scroll down here. Uh, I recommend that you click on these things here. So what does a constraint mean? So that's the relationships. And this is really important for design intent that we'll talk about later. Uh, but I want to just get you through this tutorial for now. So let's get down here. And we're going to now dimension this rectangle. So it says to click on the smart dimension. If you can't find it, click on the icon here or it's over here in the top left hand corner, smart dimension. And it says we can click on that top thing there. So click and release, don't click and hold. And then click again. And we can type in our dimension. So let's scroll down here and it says we need to type in 120. So let's do that. And we need to do it again for the right hand edge here. Click again, type in 120. Okay, so now we can go to the next topic. So now we've dimensioned that, we can ex exit the sketch. So we can click on this to exit the sketch. So we've now got the boss extrude property manager in our uh, property manager pane here. So in here under direction one, we've got blind in our end condition. You can see we've got, uh, what is that, six different conditions when we'll look at those uh, in more detail later, but we'll just leave it blind for now. And we can type in our depth here, 30. And you can also drag this handle in and out to extrude that sketch to make your three dimensional object. So we want that 30, so let's leave it at that. And then we need to click the little green tick. So we can do it over here to the top right hand corner, or we can do it in the property manager, doesn't matter. Click that and we're done. Okay, so let's go down here. We can click shaded with edges. So again, if you can't find that, you can click that. Okay, so that's off the screen on mine. So it was actually over here. It's also up in this section here. So we've got shaded with edges, shaded without edges, and so on. Okay, so let's see if it leave it shaded with edges. Let's go to the next topic. And it's adding the boss. All right, okay. So again, we want to add this circular boss on the front. 
face of this part uh, and again we've just got no instructions it just tells you we've got to do this so if you want the instructions you need to go down to the bottom right hand corner and click the next topic so we do that so click on the front face to pre-select and then we go up to the extruded boss base and select that and click normal to that's a very useful tool to know is that normal to now we're in the sketch environment and we want to click a circle sketch All right you can click on here to highlight that there it is again just drop down and have a look at the different options so we want a center circle so click somewhere near the center it doesn't have to be exact uh, release and then click again to complete the circle tool uh, so down here in our tutorial we want to click smart dimension again so that's up in the top left hand corner select the circle and that's okay so that's i'm not sure exactly what that says down here because i can't see it unfortunately um let's see if i can make that a bit smaller so i can see it that's better uh, so we want that to be 70 so let's make that 70 enter okay so next topic we want to constrain the boss so we want to make it in the center so this is not actually the best way to do this uh, and when we talk about design intent in later exercises we'll, you'll understand why but let's do the tutorial as it's written for now so smart dimension uh, select the top edge and then select the center of the circle and go out here and we're going to call that 60 and then we want to do from the right hand edge select that right hand edge select the center of the circle come down here and make that 60 as well okay uh, so one of the things that they point out here is that the geometry turns from blue to black so that indicates that the sketch is fully defined and that's another thing that we're going to talk about uh, a, a lot more in our modeling particularly with respect to design intent okay so let's go to the next topic now okay so ex exit the sketch so that's in the top right hand corner of the uh, work plane here Click that okay uh, it leaves us in that front on view if you want to go back to trimetric we can click up on that there and go trimetric view so we can see what we're doing again we can drag that in and out for our extent uh, so let's have a look at our tutorial here under direction one blind All right. so we want to line and we want the depth to be 25 enter that in enter and we can click tick and we've now got the boss extrude to appearing in the feature manager design tree okay so next topic making the hole through there again at the start of this next bit we've got um, just an instruction of what we're doing next without any detailed instruction so again if you come through the second or third time during this tutorial which is what i suggest you do you try and do this without looking at the detailed instructions uh, but for now assuming this is the first time through let's click the next bit okay so click extruded cut on the features toolbar so that's where is that over here all right again if you can't find it you can click on that and hopefully that will highlight where that is for you so we're going to do that click the front face and again click normal to now there's a shortcut to this and if you watch the linkedin learning lessons um, you'll find out where that is uh, it's also got it there control eight uh, we'll do that for you okay so we're now looking uh, at the front view so we're now in the sketch environment again and we can see that from over here so click on our sketch tool again and this time we're going to make sure that our circle 
is at the center of this boss okay so this is a little bit better than what they've told us to do before uh, this is going to constrain this circle to be concentric with the, the existing circle so drag it to anywhere you like doesn't have to be exact we're going to smart dimension over here so smart dimension click on that and we need to make that 50 okay so next topic exit the sketch so we can exit so that's up there let's have a look at this where does that highlight okay so the icon is a little bit different but so we can exit sketch up here we can exit down here it doesn't matter which one so let's do that okay so we can see we're now in the extrude um, property manager uh, we can again go up here and get to our trimetric view all right so here in the property manager we want to change our in, end condition now to go through all so this is a better design intent so no matter what we do to the rest of the model uh, this hole will always go through all of this part so let's click the tick to finish that and we can now see that we've got that hole through the part okay next topic adding the fillets okay so again an indication of what you need to do without detailed instructions if you want the detailed instructions let's go down here to the bottom right click on that okay so click the fillet let's have a look up here all right here it is and if you click on the arrow down you can see we can do fillets or chamfers and we're just going to do a fillet in this case and we want a constant size fillet which we've already got select the front face of the base so you need to look here and see that we get the right thing so click on that and we want to set the radius to five enter and we can see that preview okay um, all right so now it says to also select the four edges of the base so here we're making a design intent decision right um, and we'll talk again about that a bit later so we can click on that click on that one click on this one and then the other one's hidden but it should highlight because it interprets or infers what we're trying to do here uh, because we've included this in the one feature they're all going to have the same radius okay so down at the bottom here we can click the tick mark to complete that exercise okay so creating the boss fillets in the next topic again just tells you what to do without going through details if you want oh sorry uh, it does tell you what to do in this one uh, my mistake so let's click on fillet and we want that to be 1.5 according to the tutorial instructions so now we need to select uh, what we need to fill it. It's telling us to use the zoom. So let me zoom to selection. Okay, I don't actually have that tool um, on my GUI at the moment. but So you can click on that to have it added. Um, I'm going to get rid of that and I'm just going to use this one All right. zoom to a window just to show you something different okay so we want to if I press escape to get out of that I'm back in the select and I've selected that front face 1.5 and I can click OK and that's done okay next topic is to shell the part creating the shell so here it tells you all right we're going to shell the part but doesn't tell you how to do it okay go down to the bottom here click on the next topic to see the details click rotate view uh, again i don't have that 
Uh, you can click on that there and it'll take you to that. I'm just going to get rid of that. But if you hold down the middle mouse button uh, and rotate, you can rotate the view to see what you want. So we need to rotate to the back here. I'm using the mouse uh, scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so we're now at the back. Do you want to... Okay. Uh, now we need to get back to select. I've already done that. Select the back face. Okay. And click the shell feature. So let's find that up here. There's shell up here. Click on that. And we want to set the depth to 2 or the thickness to 2. Um, let's show a preview before we do that so we can see. Yeah, that looks okay. And okay, that. All right. Okay, so that looks like what we've got in the tutorial. Let's go to the next thing. Um, so creating a section view. So this is something that's useful to know how to do. So we'll do that just quickly. So click Trimetric to get back to where we want to be. Trimetric. Click the section view. All right, so there it is there. All right. So under section one, click the top plane. So where are we? Section section one, here it is. So we want top plane. Yep. Yeah. And then drag the handle up. And doesn't really matter where we get to. Um, we can probably be clever and put it exactly at the center if we want to. Um, but we'll save that for another tutorial. So we've done that. Let's click OK. And that's done. All right. Click on that to clear the section view. Click save. Good idea. It should be regularly saving things. All right. Next topic, editing features. Okay, so it tells us some things to do here, but doesn't give us any instruction. So for the first time through, go down to the next topic. All right, click Tyometric to get back to a standard view. Okay. Double click Boss Extrude 1 in the Feature Manager Design Tree. So that's over here. Double click. Okay, so it doesn't quite look like what it's got shown in the, uh, the tutorial here, but we can see that we've got the dimensions. So if we double click that 30 and we change that to 50, right, uh, that hasn't updated, so we need to click, so as it says in the tutorial here, click the rebuild and we can see that depth's changed. Okay, so uh, one of the advantages of this um, of SolidWorks and things like AutoCAD Inventor, etc., is that you can change easily change your model as you're working on it. Okay, and this will always happen in in design environment. Someone will ask you to change something, you'll change your mind, uh, and you want it to be easy to go in and change your model without the whole thing falling apart. Uh, and that's an important thing for design intent that we'll look at later as well. Okay, so we've done that. Let's go to modifying. Look, I I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, this is just an exercise in showing you how to, to modify the fillets. Um, you can work your way through that to change those. Um, Okay, the last thing here is adding a realistic appearance. Now, in at UTS, uh, and especially on Workspace, you may not be able to do this. So uh, have a go at it. If it doesn't work, um, it's not the end of the world. It'd be nice to have some pretty um, views of our, our, our models, but um, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if you don't. Um, you can also just change the color. Um, it'll take you through how you can change the, the, the color of your, um, of your part. So there's simple ways you can just 
do let's see um right oh, what happened there that didn't work why not um, usually that will work hmm uh, anyway you can play with that to get that to work let's see let me quickly let's see what i can do no i'm not going to waste time here i'll get that to work another time all right so having done the tutorial once what i suggest you that you do is to go right back to the start uh, and so and start again so i'm going to close this don't save and start again all right so i'm going to create the part Go to the next thing. I've already done this. Create new, creating the base. Okay, so now when you get to a, a spot like this, where it tells you to do something, have a go at trying to do it without looking at the detailed instructions that are in the next topic. Okay, so I'm gonna create a rectangle, sorry, a square. So I know I need to do an extruded boss base. I need to click on the front plane um, with one corner on the origin. So I'm going to click down here. Make sure I'm at the origin. Create my shape close to the right size. Smart dimension. The edges, 120. One twenty. Okay, let's fit that to the screen. Okay, so let's say I've gotten to here, I think, oh, I can't remember what to do next. So you can just jump ahead and look ahead and see what you need to do next. Oh, right now, I remember. Uh, and then you can go back, hide all that. And do this bit. Okay, so I need to click here to exit. All right, now I'm back in the 3D environment. I can drag this or I can type in my 30 and there I've done this part okay so what I suggest that you you do is to go through the tutorial at least twice first time following the instructions in detail and then the second time and third time all right now we've done that skip through to there now we're here all right let's do this um, so I need to do another extruded boss base click on the front and you can work in a 3D environment. In the tutorial, it showed you to go to this. Um, in this example, so I can see I'm in the sketch environment. I'm going to go here to my sketch tool and I'm going to sketch in the 3D environment this time. Okay, so that's there. And I need to make that 70. Enter. Uh, I can't remember how to put it in the center. So you can go down here and just quickly go through. All right. Or if you didn't know, didn't need to do that, you can remember that uh, you need to dimension from the top to the center. 60. Right. And as I said before, this is not the best way to do this for design intent. If your design intent is for this circle to be in the center and we'll I'll show you how to make this better in the next tutorial video okay so you can see it's gone black so you can see that it's fully constrained uh, exit the sketch and we need it to be 25 so let's type in 25 done okay so that's probably enough for this video so I'll, um, yeah, so just work through the tutorial uh, in this way and um, yeah, and then try and work through it on your own once or twice to work out how to, um, or to make sure that you know how to create simple parts like this.
Okay, so that's it for now. I um, hope this was uh, helpful and useful to you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.